at the Bespoke Show at the Lee Valley Velodrome in London, where the great and good of the custom bike scene are showing off their amazing creations. Now, I'm gonna go and have a look around. I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. This is the J Lavrak Curve 3. Now it's a one-off commission in titanium, which was inspired originally by the Dursley Pedersen. Now, if you don't remember what the Dursley Pedersen was, it was a kind of a weird Victorian sort of triangular bike that was apparently inspired by a bridge. But instead of the straight struts of the Dursley Pedersen, the customer here decided that he wanted curves. So we've got these sort of swoopy shapes, which is really nice, really elegant. And instead of the leather hammock, we've got a, a Brooks C13 saddle, which is on top of a length of titanium. It's a total one-off, it's totally custom. If you wanted the saddle height anywhere else, you couldn't do it because it's on top of here. You're just gonna have to fit longer cranks or find a saddle with different stack height. It's built up with a mix of Dura Ace, Altegra, and GRX. And it's got a profile wing bar here, a flat bar with the DI2 buttons on the sides, easy shifting. It's got these really cool little two mirrors here, uh, which the customer says work really nicely, perfect rear view. And this little silver bullet rear light here is a, is a really lovely little touch. And the lights actually work off a Dynamo, a Son Dynamo front hub. So it's got loads of really nice little details. And these carbon mud guards, which fit it exactly right. You've got proper exact space, really accurate all the way around next to the tire. It really is a, a lovely bike. Now, the customer says that this bike is kind of Marmite. You know, you, you like it or you don't like it. But I think compared to the, the bridge like Dursley Pedersen, this is definitely not a bridge too far. Now this monster of a bike is made by Huhn of Germany for a customer who is six foot 10 tall. So he's gonna need a pretty special bike. And this is not just any old big bike, this is a 36er. If you thought a 29er was big, well, this has got 36 inch wheels. Where do you get 36 inch wheels from? Well, the only type of bike that uses them is actually a unicycle. So this has got two unicycle wheels. There's no such thing as a 36er fork. So this is a custom made fork for the 36 wheel and it is enormous. So the frame is made from Reynolds 853 with a Columbus down tube, but it's got some really neat little 3D printed yokes here. This little yoke around the, the seat tube cluster here and just in front of the chain stays here, 3D printed just to make things really nice and simple and flowing. It's got some really nice little touches like a little integrated rear light down here. It's ready for big mileage and actually what the customer is planning to do is to race across Germany which starts from Flensburg in the north and goes down to Garmin Partenkirchen in the south and it's, it's 1,100 kilometers and I reckon he's going to be all right on this bike. Now this bike from Australian brand Prover is just one of the nicest bikes here, I think. It's just got exactly the right sort of shape, proportions. It's just elegant. It's just, it looks like a bike should look like. It's made from titanium, although it's got lots of 3D printed goodies that make it look as if it could be a carbon monocoque almost, or carbon tube to tube at least. The seat cluster just here has a 3D printed yoke in polished titanium. This little cap here on the seat tube is also made of 3D printed titanium and it's got Prober's own 3D printed section on top of the head tube here um, to fit the Envy bar on properly so that it fits in really nicely, really neatly and really tidily, no cables at all showing. The seat tube is Prober's own carbon tube that they made in Melbourne out of prepreg, and it just fits in with the rest of the titanium frame just in a really lovely sort of beautiful contrasting kind of way. Now the paint is really simple but it just, it works so well. You've got sandblasted titanium down here and polished titanium up there and this white painted front. All the painting and the, the polishing, the blasting is all done in-house as well in Melbourne. It's just a lovely example of a handmade bike. So this bike was actually made for a customer in London, so somebody is saving on the shipping. Um, but the downside is that this bike is attracting so much attention that it's going to be covered in greasy fingerprints by the end of this show. And I have to say, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on it either. Now, just in case you didn't do Latin at school, silver means wood. And this bike is actually made of wood. It's made of ash and walnut, and it's made of 40 separate pieces of wood, all joined together with epoxy to join it into this frame that you see here. 
and it's coated in 11 coats of polyurethane to make it completely weatherproof. And it takes 100 hours to make. So it's a, it doesn't just pop out of a mold like any other carbon bike. In terms of its weight, it is a little bit heavier than a carbon bike, but the weight is comparable with an alloy bike. How does it ride? Does it have a wooden ride quality? Well, the answer is no. Wood soaks up vibration really nicely, small bumps, and it's torsionally very stiff. So it's got a nice ride quality, according to the people who made it. Um, will it break is the other question. Well, the answer again is no. Um, it's, it's passed all the fatigue and impact testing that make it uh, ISO certified. And in fact, Silver told me that the aluminium dropout broke before the wooden frame did. So obviously this bike is big on sustainability. The wood is actually Forestry Stewardship Council approved. The epoxy that it's bonded with is also made from other waste. It's all very eco, as you can tell. If you think you're going to need special components with special custom sizes, you're barking up the wrong tree because it actually takes completely standard components. Everything is a standard size. It's got an ordinary Altegra group set on here. It has a metal sleeve for the bottom bracket and another one in the head tube for the headset. So everything is completely standard. Would you? I would. There are lots of bikes here that people are saying, yes, that's a work of art. But this one actually is a work of art because it was painted by Lucia of Velofique in the Japanese Kintsugi art style. And here, if you look really closely at these, it's not just kind of random colors. You can make out little gold trees and bushes and skies. And this broken pottery with beautified gold edges is a feature that's on the tubes just here. Even the name of the frame builder, Quirk, that says quirk in Japanese, at least phonetically, it's not the Japanese for quirk. The bike itself is made from steel, but like a lot of bikes we're seeing here, it's got a 3D printed cluster just here so that it flows really smoothly into the chain stays. The dropouts also are 3D printed, and it's got this really, really bling, sturdy 3D printed titanium crank, which is pretty cool. The build is also really high end. It's built up with SRAM Red, ETAP, the MG finishing kit, the seat post, the bar and stem are all painted in the same aubergine with the gold decals as the rest of the frame. Now, aubergine is like a, just, it, it really works for this bike. It's such a great color. Aubergine or eggplant, if you like. Um, I think this is one of the tastiest bikes here. This is the Festka Spectre 2.0, made by the Czech brand from Prague. And I think this is really one of the nicest fade jobs I've seen at Bespoke this time. It's got this really lovely sort of orange and silver. It just all goes together so beautifully. The saddle, Celia Italia carbon saddle, and the NB bar again. We're seeing a lot of those at Bespoke this time. It's just beautiful. Now it looks like a carbon monocoque, but actually it's made using a tube to tube construction. So it is possible to have one of these completely custom made. But what's really clever about this is that Although it's completely made to measure, has this integrated seat post, the integrated seat post itself has an internal diameter of 27.2 millimeters. So if you sold the bike or if you bought it off somebody who'd had it made to measure for them, what you could do is just put an ordinary seat post inside it and clamp it with an ordinary seat clamp. So it's not gonna be the one and only owner. There's some nice clever little 3D printing going on here as well. This saddle clamp is 3D printed and it's like a really nice little tube, really neat little solution, very lightweight as well and can be made with a very slightly different stack height if necessary if you wanted to adjust your saddle height by just a, a small amount. But this bike has got plenty going on underneath the paint. It's got lots of clever little details. Check out this absolute black pulley wheel system. It's got absolute black lattice brake pads as well. And this has a little Torx key on the end, which is something really nice. I haven't seen that before. Put it back in again. But all this custom goodness obviously doesn't come cheap. And I just asked Fesca what they think the price for this complete build would be. And they reckon around 15,000 pounds. So better get saving. Now, in case you didn't recognize it, this is a flying gate. The legendary design that's been almost the same, pretty much unchanged since 1934. And the good news is that the design has just been taken over by Smithy Frameworks from 
Trevor Jarvis, TJ Cycles, who had been building them since 1979. Now, the thing that makes this bike so distinctive is the split seat tube, and that's so that you can get the rear wheel in really close to the back of the seat tube for a really short wheelbase and a really responsive ride. Now, something that Smithy Frameworks is doing is he's going to introduce a, a flying gate RS, which means rough stuff, and that means that this bike can be ridden on gravel a little bit more, is updating it for the 21st century. This is actually a TJ Cycles version. Smithy Frameworks trained with TJ Cycles to just get the design exactly right until Trevor Jarvis was happy with it, and he is, and then he handed it over. So we're going to be seeing a gravel-specific flying gait pretty soon, and that's something to look forward to. Apart from that, this bike really is the same as it has been for 88 years. So it's fair to say that the flying gait is still flying high after all this time. So those are my highlights of Bespoke 2022. Which bike did you like best? Don't forget to let us know in the comments underneath. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, finally, I couldn't help noticing that as well as custom bikes, there's a craft brewery here. So I'm just off for a pint and I'll see you later.